So, welcome back to uh, this almost last video demonstration on Perl with me, Joachim Schäverstad from the University of Skövde. And we're going to dig right into regular expressions part 2. Uh, and what we're going to do now is look uh, a little bit uh, on match groups and on string replacements. Because uh, one, one of the really nice things you can do with Perl is that, uh, or with regular expressions is that you can search for instances of something within a string and and modify it and change it to something else. And this can be especially important if you, for instance, is uh, is from Sweden or any other country where you have these strange letters that are not A to Z and you want to make sure to change them to uh, something that is A to Z. Or if you're looking for, uh, I don't know, maybe modifying something on a web page and you want to uh, make something bold or, or whatever it may be. Uh, or if you just want to search and remove something from from a set of text. So let's dig right into how how this works. So I have a short script here where I have uh, where I have a string that I instantiated, which is one, two, three, lemon four five six. Uh, and then I'm going to show you how to make uh, how to make a string replacement here. Uh, because remember from uh, from last time I'm going to take back the last script. Remember here when we had uh, the regular expression for um, as a condition. What we actually had in in front of the regular expression here, there should be a letter, uh, which in, in this case should be an M, but you don't need it because M is the sort of the default behavior, and that is match. So what we're doing here is that we're matching the variable name, which contains something that we uh, prompted from the keyboard, uh, and we're looking for uh, for something within that variable, and then we have the M uh, operator, which is match. Um, there is another one, uh, in this case S, which is substitute. So what we want to do here, what we say here is that we look at the variable string and we do uh, equals to tilde, which is the regular expression, and then we have the operator string. So this is what we're going to apply to, uh, to the variable string. Then the syntax is as follows, when we have S then first we have uh, the reg x that we're looking for, um, in this case 0 to 9, which is a number, and then we have, what should we call it, the new text. So we're going to look for this and replace it with this. So in this case we're looking for 0 to 9 and we're going to replace it with n. Uh, so if I just do a print string is dollar string and we want to have backslash n and, and then we print the string again at the end with a new line. So what should what should happen here is that we should look for we're we we're instantiating the string one two three lemon four five six and then we're printing the string and then we're substituting the first number to n. So let's try it. So what happens here is that string is one two three lemon four five six and then you can see that it becomes n two three lemon four five six. And this is because when we do a regular, exp when we when we do this regular expression, that's what we're asking for. Because whenever we're doing a regular expression like so, we're looking for the first match. In the matching con in the matching case, it doesn't matter if it's one or more matches because as long as it's a match, it's going to be a match. So the match can be anywhere. But when we find a match, we stop looking. However, in this case, if we want to change all instances, we have to make a add a modifier to the end here, which is G, which stands for global. So if we go global, then we're going to look for all matches. And I'm just going to show you this. Now the effect should be that all the letters uh, all, or the numbers should be substituted to ends. Uh, running the script again, you can see that now we have n, 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 lemon, n, n, n. So that's what we did. And the difference was that we, at the very end, added a operator which is G. So now I remove the operator again and you can see that when we test run the script only the first match is is substituted and when we add it again um, you 
can see that all of them are substituted. I also want to show you again the escape character. So escape character is what we want when we have a special character, but we want the literal, literal meaning of it. So let's add a couple of dots to our to our string here. Now what we want to do is substitute the dots for for x's. If I take a dot here and say substitute a dot to an x, what's going to happen is that everything is substituted to an x, and that is because the dot is a wildcard, so the dot will match any character. But if we truly want to match on a dot, then we can add a backslash in front of the dot. And the backslash uh, says that we want to escape the meaning of the dot, and instead use the dot uh, literal. Uh, literal. So if we run it like that, you can see that the dots are changed for x's instead. Uh, and that is basically what we want to do uh, for this little demo on substitute. And of course, you can build a lot more, uh, a lot smarter regular expressions, as I showed you last time. We can, for instance, do uh, zero to nine and say that we want to have, uh, um, we want it to happen one or more, uh, several or more times with a star. Uh, and what should happen now is that we want to match 1, 2, 3 as one match and substitute it to an X. And we're running that. And now you see that we get uh, sort of funky results. And that is because... Uh, that is because the... That is because the star is sort of greedy, so it takes as much as it possibly can. So a smarter way can be to go with a plus that says a, that says one or more, and we'll see. You can see now the difference in the result. Now we get exactly what we want. Uh, so if you get if you're using these operators, the plus, the question mark, or the star, and you see that you get uh, sort of uh, strange results, then you can try another one. So this, you should know that the star is sort of greedy. It tries, it tries to match as much as possibly can. Um, so that's it. And we show the operators. And now we're just going to quickly show you uh, match groups. We discussed match groups a little bit uh, last time. So in this little script we have an IP address here in a variable and then we have a regular expression that is made to uh, to check if the variable IP holds an IP address or not. So the regular expression here is again that we're using um, is to begin with we're using it as a condition. So we have if uh, $IP equals tilde to have a matching regular expression and then I built an IP address here. So what we say is first, the, don't don't care about the parentheses for now, first we say uh, 0 to 9 one or more times followed by a dot. You see that there's a backslash in front of the dot because we want the literal, literal meaning of it. And then we have 0 to 9 one or more times followed by a dot, 0 to 9 one more times followed by a dot and 0 to 9 one or more times and then we're done. I agree an, uh, an IP address uh, I, I agree that this regular expression would, would allow IP addresses that looks like this uh, while it should only allow three letters let's get into that so soon but it's okay for now. So what I want to show you here is the parenthesis. I can put parentheses around a part of a regular expression and it will be a group. So in, th in this case, I put a parenthesis here. So this is one group, the first 0 to 9 and a dot. And I also put a parenthesis around the last part of the regular expression. So the last, uh, and the last numbers will also be a group. And I can print those with $1, $2 and so on and so forth. So $1 will be the first match group, this part. $2 will be the second match group, which in this case will be this. So the idea here is that if IP contains a uh, contains a string that looks like an IP address, it's going to first print the IP address, then print the first match group, then print the second match group. If it doesn't contain something that looks like an IP address, it's going to print no IP. So let's try it. Oops. 
and you can see that it does. First it prints the entire IP address, so the regular expression works, and then it goes 192 dot, which is the first match group, and then it goes 3, which is the last match group. And just to show you if I change the variable name here that I'm testing to FIP, which is the fake IP, containing fake, you can see that it will output no IP, so the matching works as well. So that was it for regular expressions, a very short and small introduction. Something that I want to show you once again is to use RubleR to build your regular expression, and something that goes uh, without saying when it comes to script programming is to test uh, on regular intervals. So for instance, if I want to know that my regular expression here works, oops, black, um, if I want to test that this works to match an IP address, I actually want to print something here, because that's the easiest way to see in the prompt that the script actually goes into this code section. So, that's it. Uh, next time we're going to have a short uh, introduction or a short script where we're actually going to do something together. Uh, so that you sort of get my idea on how to solve things. Good, thank you for this. See you next time.